Hey guys, how we doing? Rough rooster knife sharpening. I uh, got you a cool little blade tonight. Um, <clears throat> there's a guy at work that uh, that made this little knife, and I think it's his first knife. And um, I mean, I think there's a few little things that could be changed about it, but for somebody making their first one, he kind of he kind of done something a little bit different than you know, everybody else would. Anyhow, um, this is it. It's a little miniature cleaver. It's 1095. Done some jimping right there. Some kind of file work there. Got a little hole, looks like an old butcher's knife. Large lanyard hole. It's a it's a small little fella. So he uh, he's worked on it, and worked on it, and worked on it, and he straightened it out. He straightened the main bevel out on a small little belt sander. I don't think he done a, a horrible job on it. Uh, it I mean it's decently sharp, but I mean it it would cut something if you had to, but it's just not not where it needs to be. I think he's tried to sharpen it on something else other than the belt. But anyway, we're going to clean this thing up a little bit for him. Uh, first stone of choice here is a older Norton silicon carbide. It's a coarse stone. It's 180 grit. So, I'm, want, I'm wanting to do some rapid metal removal. So that's the reason I'm choosing this stone to begin with. And I'm, I'm honestly trying to use these a little bit more lately, more than my coarse and extra coarse DMTs because they're, they're, they're wearing really hard, really quick. Uh, I need to clean my desk. Okay, so let's try this out here. Get this out of the way. Got to find a good little angle here where he started at. Got to straighten that bevel out some. Yeah, I know a lot of you guys don't like this scrubbing method, but I'm just holding a consistent angle here to kind of see how straight this bevel is. Let's see what we got here. Oh Lord. This thing's going to require some work. Sometimes you guys will see me do different stuff like this and uh, it's not particularly the method that I care for, but when trying to grind something away like this, you got to try, kind of try a little bit of everything. Okay, so. if you can see it there on the camera but right here in the middle this edge is like this right here in the middle it's not picking up very well so that means the end of both sides here are taller than the middle So you guys can see the oil right there in the middle see that little spot that's what I was just talking about about both ends of the blade being higher 
and I really don't know how this little blade has been heat treated. Let's just hope it's not super hard or something crazy. Starting to straighten out a little bit. See, when when you're sharpening something kind of unknown like this, and you think that you might possibly need to remove more metal than you usually would, just go ahead and break out, you know, your your beastly stone and get the big work out of the way and get to the real fun stuff. Which I like doing this too, but you know what I mean. Okay, so we're starting to build a decent little burr here. So we're going to keep going on this side. Go ahead and flip my stone so I don't wear one end or side more than the other. I know you guys can see all that metal slurry right there too. This uh, <laughs> this Norton course is is a beast. Do a little bit of work right here on this tip. Whoops. you guys have seen it in other videos but again I've gotten to a point where I've gotten you know a lot of new viewers and uh, you know a lot of people just haven't seen all of my videos and uh, I'm having to repeat some things but when you guys see me you know doing something like what I just did on one particular spot you know I'm not condoning that is how to sharpen sometimes you just you have to work on a certain area and bring it down or bring it up a little bit more well not bring it up but just kind of make everything mix together to get one good bevel if that makes sense now guys when I do this you can see my fingers out there it's slightly sitting on the stone to where I can feel that rock if it happens to start rocking, I can immediately change it. Because this is not a Scandivex or a Convex. This is just a really, really big bevel. thing that you guys can do too watch down here towards the tip or towards the uh, choil to the tip how I do this this is a homemade knife so we really need to check centering see how center that bevel is you have a woo don't do that <laughs> if you have one bevel or if you have the bevels off 
more to the left or to the right, then uh, it's not really going to cut right. Yeah, I believe we're pretty good on the bevel centering issue. They ground this thing pretty good. I mean, it, it's not perfect, but it's it's all right. And one thing that you guys, you know, a lot of you on here, I know experiment with making knives. Um, you know, this is somebody else's design. I'm not knocking it, but that's, that's pretty thick stock. That's three sixteenths, I believe. And that's a really small blade. And in order for us to get it to cut halfway decent, um, we're having to make a really wide bevel here. Um, so, in my opinion, a thinner stock for something this small would have been more appropriate. But, again, I'm not knocking it. You know, it's not my design. Um, I'm sure it'll do well. Now one thing, if you guys have used a lot of silicon carbide stones, you'll notice there's a slurry built up right there. They're not like Arkansas's, and it's not like a Japanese water stone either. It's, it's similar, but it's different. If you get a pile up of slurry, try to keep it towards the end of your stone as much as you can, or evenly distribute it, because if you hit that pile of slurry, it kind of skips, if that makes sense. So, um, we've got us a good little bevel here. Pretty sure. We're not going to, you know, take this thing way up there and make it hair split and sharp because I, I don't think it needs it. But we're still going to put a, a decent little edge on it. Let's see how we can make this work here. Probably going to use a series of strops. I'll show you a little trick on here in a few minutes. Uh, let's get this Norton fine here. We'll clean up that nasty thing here in a little bit. Norton, the Norton fines, they're they're an awesome little stone. The fine end is, but man, I tell you what, once they get gummed up too much they completely stop cutting. But the fine stones like four or five hundred grit I think they leave a they leave a decent little little edge. Nothing absolutely spectacular. But they leave a good working edge if that's what you're after. And they're fairly inexpensive. And guys, you know that I don't generally sharpen this way, but I'm kind of finding this little thing difficult to hold because of its size and how large, shoot, how large this bevel is. I'm gonna have to come up with something different for these large stones like this.
pocket and kill that little relief right there. Just a little for aided cutting better. It's already got a, a decent little edge on it. Um, let me try to deburr this thing a little bit real quick. And you guys know, you know, more for carbon steels and stuff, especially on something with a wider bevel like this. I usually, whoop, I usually don't go really high in grit it's still got a little bit of burr on it well gotta plug my phone in sorry alright so <clears throat> discard that rag get us a new one here of it so this is one thing that I do especially on scandies so I'm kind of treating this like a, a miniature scandy grind I guess you could say so I'll get this awesome little set of strops here that we're going to use on it Let's see. Here we go. I'm gonna do a video on these sometime later. I keep forgetting about it. This is, and yeah, it needs to be cleaned up a little bit, but this is a coarse Pasagoy. Um compound and <clears throat> this stuff if you if you've messed up anything here or if you've got a funky grind that you're working with but you don't want to take a ton of steel away but you still want a good sharp edge start out with this coarse stuff you can actually hear it if you listen look up what's in this stuff but man I'm telling you it's it's awesome Ryan Ware sent me that some of this stuff or sent me this stuff here and turned me on to it I am a firm believer in Pasagoy products after using these three still got just a little bit of a burr out there no I don't Heat treat on this thing, it's all right. It could, it could be better. You can tell a lot about heat treat by sharpening one and using it. Specifically using it, but if you really, really know what you're doing sharpening, you can, uh, <clears throat> you can tell a big difference. 
um, when you sharpen one. So, so far, you just have a 400 grit stone and a coarse finish. Still just a little grabby. Decent. <clears throat> okay, so now we have Pasagoy medium and the Pasagoy fine. So <clears throat> we're going to use this medium. The medium feels kind of like, kind of reminds me of coloring with a crayon. Um, just a little sticky and tacky. You can, it's got good feedback to it. You can feel it kind of holding you back. tip right there been fighting me the whole way Definitely waking it up. I made these drops, by the way. This right here is one of my favorite drops. And that is a pine base. And believe it or not, this compound here, being a medium, still removes a adequate amount of steel. Now, since we're getting a little bit finer, we're gonna start alternating our passes here. See what it'll do now. See if it's any better. Oh yeah. So we've got a little bit of a grab. Maybe not. Maybe that was just me. fine side. Now the Pasagoy fine is the exact opposite of the other stuff. It's very slick. Um, and this is actual honing compound. Um, all three of these are. This is not buffing compound. Um, I have learned that buffing compound has waxes or binding agents in addition to to the actual abrasive that's in there. So, you don't need that for honing. Y'all you need is the abrasive to stick on here. You know, it's not gonna be spinning at a high speed. That's the reason the binders, or the binding agents and the waxes are in the buffing compounds to hold to that high speed wheel.
So, let's see how this one is. There's something is catching right there, but there's nothing there. I don't understand it. I mean, damn, if it's sharp enough to do that right there, shit. Y'all see that? Anyway, uh, just wanted to show you guys what uh, what I was working on this evening. Show you a little something different. Uh, hope you guys have a good evening. Y'all take her easy.